This is our weekly Tuesday at 2 live video. And I'm going to do something today that I hope is going to be helpful to you. I'm going to show you how to use just one color plus black and white to create value in your painting. So I did a poll, a little poll on my, um, my email that I sent out yesterday. And I just asked, what do you guys want to learn? And a lot of you were telling me that sort of the same kinds of things you're having trouble with trying to figure out where to put the lights and the darks to make something look more three dimensional. You're wanting to learn how to add more layers of color in your paintings. And a lot of the things that you guys were saying have to do with value. So I thought this would be something that would be fun that we could do and I'll show you. We're gonna paint something similar to this. This is um, something I did a few years ago, but I've, actu I've actually got a full tutorial on my website showing you how to do this geranium, uh, potted geranium, but we're gonna do a little red geranium and I'm just going to use some red and I'm also going to use some yellow to make the leaves but um we're just going to have red yellow black and white those are the only paints we're going to use for this and I thought this would help you with just about anything that you paint so this is a fun exercise you can do I'm going to show you this first so value is um it's going to be on your color wheel too, just like your colors, but it's going to be in black and white and gray. And every hue has a value. So whether it's just yellow or just red, it already has a value as far as how dark or how light it is. But when you want to do something that looks sort of three dimensional, it doesn't have to be hyper-realistic, but you want to have value in your painting because that is going to give you the depth that you're looking for. So one way to do that is to add a little bit of black and a little bit of white to one color. So we're going to get out some white and some red and some black. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make some little color swatches here. So this is the red in its pure form. And then we're going to mix some black with it. And we'll get a darker value. Can you see that? No, you cannot. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. Let me see if I can move my camera up. There we go. Okay. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay too. Okay, I got a thumbs up from somebody. All right, so we've got <laughs> the red here in its pure form. And then we've got a darker value. Thanks, Norma, she says you can hear. And then we're gonna take some red and mix it with some white. And we're gonna get a lighter value. And it can get as light as you want it to get. And adding the black, you can get it as dark as you want it to get. But this is value. Okay, so that's what you want to have when you're painting. And you can, you can achieve this in uh, several different ways, but this is the most simplified way for me to show you how to do this. And normally, I would start with the darker value. So if we're going to paint something like this little geranium here, 
We're going to want to start with the darker red. And I'm just going to make wet my brush a little bit more. Just going to make some random little areas of this color. And maybe we'll have one sticking up back here. Okay. So that's going to be our dark value. And when you're painting with acrylics, building up from dark to light is, is what I do. So we've got the dark. Now we're going to put in the middle value, which would just be this red here. And we're going to kind of go back over this without covering up all of the dark. And right now it doesn't look like much, but when we start to add the leaves, that's when it really comes to life. Okay, and now we're gonna add the light value, which doesn't have to be super light for this one to get an effect. So here's where a lot of us get kind of stuck. Where is the light coming from? That's what you have to do. You have to kind of plan ahead of time. And right now we've got some dark areas kind of on this backside of these flowers. So the light is probably coming from this direction, shining over here. So that means we're gonna need lighter, lighter areas over here. where the light is just in your head, try to imagine if a light was shining on a flower in this direction, where would that light fall? Okay. And now we've got the flowers and we need to do the greenery. So I'm gonna use some cadmium yellow which I think you cannot see. Let me pull this down. There we go. And black, and that makes a really pretty green. And we can do the same thing with this. We can get the green and put in our dark first. Let's get some stems here. Maybe a little greenery there. And then we can lighten it up. Add a little white to that. And then put some highlights on our leaves and on this side of our stems. And on this one here, I've got these little, little things that come down. I don't know what you call those, but they're on geraniums. <laughs> and then there's a little bit of it's almost like a little bud, a little bit of red on the tips of those. And I feel like I've got a little too much pink going on here. So I may go back. And 
go back and cover that up a little bit with some more of our bright red. And that is the beauty of paint. You can go back over things. You can completely cover it up and start over if you don't like it. But let's do a little value scale of our green. So we had the yellow and black. I'm gonna add a little extra black. And then we'll add some white. Maybe a little more yellow in there. Okay. So that is how you get that dimension and that's how you get layering and the, the colors that really pop out and stand out, that is the best way to get that to happen. So you can even lighten up even more. You don't have to have a just one dark, medium, and light, but you need to have at least a dark, medium, and light. And then you can go back in with even lighter lights and darker darks. Um, you can play with it as much as you want to. So we got all of this from a red, yellow, black, and white. A giant container of white. <laughs> you could actually do an entire painting using a very limited number of colors. And if you wanted to put in a background on this, some of you who think you know, using your color wheel, what would be a good color for a background on this? If you look at your wheel, red is over here on the warm side and its complementary color is green, which we've got red and green here. So, what would we want to use for a background color? Can anybody tell me what you think? Let's see. Hi, Patricia. Anybody have any ideas what would be a good background color for these red flowers? I'll give you a hint. It needs to be cool. Yellow or blue, blue, light green, all of those are good choices. So let's just see which one would look best. There's probably not going to be a perfect color. It's going to be your preference. So let's go with a really light yellow first. See how that looks. Okay, so over here, it's really more like a cream color is what it has turned out to be, so. That could be really pretty. That one looks really happy. That would be a very happy painting. All right, so we got that. Now let's try, someone else said a light green. So let's see what that looks like going to be very similar, but it may clash with our leaves here. So if we tried, we tried light green. Yeah, see, it's going to, it's going to just take over the leaves and you're not going to be able to tell that there are leaves there at all. So what about blue? Let me find my blue paint. Let's do some cerulean blue. I think a light blue is what someone said. 
Uh, someone else says a more vibrant yellow. Patricia says light blue. Would you go for a triadic color? Lynn asks. More vibrant yellow. Blue. Okay, we're going to try some blue and see what happens. And I'm going to get back to your other questions. Just a second. Okay, so here's... If I were doing blue, I would want to pull it down a little bit. Almost like a... Purpley. I want it to be light too. So I added a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow in there. I just got some red on my brush. That's okay. And that's not going to clash with. with our leaves. But yes, either one of those would work. Yellow or blue. I'm gonna cover this up over here. Or maybe even like a teal color. So it would be maybe some yellow and blue, or green and blue, sorry, which would give us something like this. It might still be a little too much, too much like the leaves unless you really lightened it up. But that could be really pretty too. Okay, so watch this. Now I'm going to paint over this yellow right here with this teal color and some of that yellow is still going to peek through. And that is another way to get depth in your painting. See how that yellow is peeking out around the edge of that flower? So using more than one color on your background can be another way to get some really pretty effects. So layering colors, making sure you've got light, medium, and dark. Both of those things are very, very helpful. So let's look at this. Someone mentioned triad. If we're looking at red here, oh, I got the wrong arrow, red, then split complementary colors would be a blue green. That would be this here or a yellow green. And that also complements this really well. And then we've got the blue and the yellow as the triad. And that is what we chose at first. So using your color wheel can be very, very helpful when you're trying to decide what color to use for a background use colors that complement whatever the main color is in your painting. Even though we had these green leaves here, we could still use like an aqua colored background and it would still work just fine as long as it's more on a blue green and not a green green so that there's a little bit of contrast there and you can tell the difference between the background and the leaves. So I thought that this would be helpful to you guys who are, are struggling with value. You don't really know exactly what it is that's missing in your paintings. If they're turning out kind of flat and you don't know how to get more depth, this may be something that you need to add to whatever it is that you're painting. And let me see if you guys have asked me any questions that I didn't see. It's kind of hard for me to scroll on here. Do you guys have any questions? And yes, a lot of these um, suggestions that you've had for the background would work. 
It's just a matter of preference. Lynn says, thank you. It's very helpful. I'm glad. Glad you thought it was. And you guys can go back and watch the replay if you would like to. Um, if you didn't get the, the beginning of this, I'm also going to have this over on my YouTube channel and on my blog. And I will see you guys back here next week at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Bye.